What's up YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. Back to this quarterly favorite songs segment that I love doing so much. And actually, as part of the uh, fall 2018 procrastination extravaganza, I actually did make lists for Q3 2018, Q4 2018. I just never shot them. It's amazing. And now it's just like, it feels weird talking about music from like July 2018. Like the Q3 video has that Tame Impala Travis Scott collaboration. Like, doesn't that feel like not exactly current? But hey, if you guys are at all curious uh, about what songs I was digging in the latter half of 2018, just leave a comment because I'd be happy to just go back and retroactively shoot those real quick because they're basically done anyway. So first quarter of this year, I had a lot to choose from, which is always a good problem to have. As usual, you will find in the description of this video, a Spotify link to this playlist with an additional 10 honorable mentions for a, a nice round 25 songs. Uh, no metal music. One song in this list could be kind of debated, but as my viewers know, I tend to keep the, the metal stuff and the non-metal stuff completely separate. And again, as usual, alphabetical order by artist. This is not a ranking, but rather just a, a lovely little collection of songs that existed in my life in some form from New Year's Day until April Fool's Day. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna alienate everybody right off the bat with my very first pick here. This is a classic example of a super basic, watered down, fratty little EDM ditty, uh, Lesso's Time, which comes off this mixtape he put out last month called Progresso Volume One. I don't know, something about springtime coming around always makes me feel like I'm in college again, even though I'm several years removed. And, and my music taste tends to reflect that. Shit like this wouldn't hit my radar unless it was like, you know, the weather's turning and I'm in a good mood. I'm thinking about like day drinks again, that kind of shit. Um, this is just as rudimentary a fucking pop dance song as they come, but I've been addicted to it. I really have. Will its appeal last? That's a good question. But in terms of what I'm enjoying right now, I gotta include this. Something I do love in dance music is how the vocals are often utilized just as another instrument. A lot of times they don't mean anything. They don't necessarily push an emotional agenda forward. They're just there to establish these repetitive melody lines and embellish a musical structure that's already there. As opposed to the format of pop music, which is like the vocals are the centerpiece and then the musical arrangement of the production is, is the underbelly. I've always liked how dance music kind of flips that on its head and time is, is a good example of that. Love the grooves, love the, the synth solo towards the end of this song. It's just a fun, carefree, simple dance tune that I've been surprisingly coming back to quite a bit. Every Wave to Ever Rise by American Football. The recent comeback of this pivotal late 90s emo band has been just so exciting and their recently released LP3 is chock full of these quite sorrowful but gorgeous tunes and 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 the masterful every wave to ever rise is definitely my favorite the juxtaposed clean guitars that are panned left and right in this song are, are just breathtaking they're just beautiful the very talented elizabeth powell from land of talk appears here as a guest vocalist to lend some ethereal vocals to add to what is already uh, just a floating sonic experience here. I might recommend this one the most of any song I talk about here in this video. It's just so amazing. Please give it a listen if you haven't yet. Ariana Grande blew my mind with the track Ghostin' from her Thank You Next record. This song, this song is fucking emotionally heavy. Holy shit. Look, I suppose lyrically it could be about anything, but to me, this song seems to paint a picture of Ariana mourning the sudden death of her ex-boyfriend Mac Miller while still dating Pete Davidson. Can you fucking imagine how difficult that situation must have been? Especially if you're Pete. Like obviously you wanna be there for your girl and comfort your girl, but there's probably this weird jealousy that comes about from your girl crying over an ex. And let's be honest, there's a good chance that this all too untimely sudden death might've brought up unresolved feelings that she had for him. She dated the guy for two years, seemed to have, have broken up with him more over substance abuse issues than just a straight incompatibility. God, I really, when I listen to the song, I really feel for the two of them. And this song does an incredible job of painting the picture of the situation very vividly. Like, I feel like I'm in the bedroom and I'm watching her like cry while he's like sort of like trying to comfort her, but clearly bothered, but can't really show it because it would be inappropriate. It's just a tricky situation. Um, 
and uh, my heart really aches for them in this song. This dude, Benjamin Francis Lefwich, who is a British singer-songwriter, he intrigued me quite a bit with this song, Tell Me You Started to Pray, off his new album, Gratitude. He has this soothing, breathy voice that I like. He has, he has a real tasteful ear for arranging in this particular song. And just thematically and lyrically, his music differs significantly from my daily palette. And this song was, was a real mood change for me. The spirituality theme here, I particularly found myself connecting with because personally, I've actually rediscovered that part of my life, not necessarily in the dogmatic religious way, but whatever you wanna call it, mindfulness, spirituality, prayer, that whole kind of part, really part of the brain that um, these exercises engage. I found myself coming back to that um, in a time when I, when I really needed it and really helped me. And, and hearing this song about like, starting to pray. I don't really know what the context is here, but the idea is kind of sweet that maybe like it's it's a lover um, admitting to the other that they rediscovered their their spiritual self. So Billie Eilish, this this new album of hers, or Eilish or whatever the fuck it is, this new album of hers was one of those super industry albums that, that people like me approach with great skepticism, but then reluctantly found ourselves buying in because it was actually good. Like, it's a great record. I love when that happens. <laughs> when something like comes out that, that, that's kind of being pushed by the industry machine and then you actually end up liking it. It's just, you know, they can't all be making trainers. You know, sometimes they, people push things that are actually pretty good. There are many highlights in this record, many highlights, uh, but the song I Love You is particularly haunting. This is one of those songs about the pain of love, which just hits you right here. Uh, that lyric, I wish we never learned to fly. <sighs> That's heavy shit when you, when you really think about what she's saying. And also, I don't know if it's unintentional or intentional, but the, the song's chorus does contain, I guess, an interpolation of the song Hallelujah. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, the one pseudo metal song, I'm gonna call it rock because let's face it, this band has been rock for pretty much this whole decade. Bring Me the Horizon with, ironically, heavy metal. God, this song is not only irresistibly catchy, but perfectly captures in a uniquely delivered fashion this familiar theme of a band changing their sound and their fans subsequently turning on them, which is something that happens in every genre, but particularly in metal music. And what I love about this song's lyrics is that they focus on the inner turmoil of the band members as this criticism is being flung at them. The pressure, the fear, the self-doubt, you just, you get this feeling that Ollie Sykes is about to explode as he delivers <laughs> his lyrics. And honestly, what really defines my soft spot for this song is just the angry, bitter sarcasm that his delivery is just dripping with. Some kid on the gram in a Black Dahlia tank. It's just so childish and angry and he's just lashing out in this real sarcastic, I'm not gonna say catty way, but it's definitely dripping with that kind of that kind of vibe. And as a music reviewer who tends to prefer stylistic changes, I can't help but be on his side here too. And the new record Amo had some great moments on it that kind of was were really a fuck you to people who said they couldn't do this. They're doing it. They're making like pop rock and it's fine. The world didn't collapse. Daddy Yankee con calma. Crazy catchy, massively popular Latin pop tune. Good for Daddy Yankee for continuing to capitalize on this, this just massive Latin wave that's, that's sweeping American popular music. Deer Hunter's Futurism was my first love of the year way back in early January. This song has that carefree indie rock bounce to it that I find utterly addicting. And just listen to how airtight the fucking guitar, drum, and bass trio is just locked in on this song. The, the, the band just moves rhythmically as a complete unit. And then it's really just the vocal melodies that float over this lockstep rhythm that's being established. Definitely made me think of like Arcade Fires, The Suburbs, for instance. Dizzy Wright blew me away with his exceptional and exceptionally titled new record, Nobody Cares Work Harder. <laughs> what a fucking title. Uh, and the intro track to this record, Self Love Is Powerful, it's just been a complete anthem for me. The contemplative instrumental here is beautiful. Oh my God. Uh, Dizzy's uh, almost sage-like syncopated flow here is, is outstanding. Just, you know what? Listen to this whole record. If you don't know where to start, start with Grateful with, with Tech 9 after you get this song and just work your way through. Dizzy Wright is, is an underrated fucking rapper and his maturity on a track like this just blows my mind. It's amazing to watch artists grow up and any song about self-love 
it's probably gonna get a listen from me, but just the way it's delivered and executed is just magic. Emma Rosa, this is a surprising artist to see on here for sure. The opening track given up off the new record Peach Club could not have given less of a shit about this band when they were like your typical run of the mill warp tour metalcore act but they've kind of caught my ear recently with their recent shift towards this alternative sound. I mean, this song, Given Up, just has nothing to do with metal at all. It, it's a crackling, energetic alt-rock tune, super prominent and groovy bass line in here that I love, crunchy, snapping guitars, the falsetto vocals and the hook are a slam dunk, the saxophone solo and electronic flourishes towards the end of the track are just icing on the cake, I'm so glad I gave this band a chance this time around. And they surprised me with a few tracks on this record. Um, I, I Want to Die With You, that almost made this list. It definitely could have. It always pays to give like some random band a, a chance on a whim. Just just give, give people a chance to surprise you or impress you. And that's definitely what Amorosa did with several tracks off the new record. But Given Up is, is a particular must listen. Kehlani already has one of my favorite projects of the entire year with her While We Wait mixtape of which Morning Glory is probably my favorite cut. Everything about this track from, from the wah-wah guitars in the very 90s inspired instrumental to the creative uh, backing vocal layering to the feminist tilted lyrics about this holistic acceptance of your partner versus just wanting this only this, this fake masqueraded version of them. I love it all, but you know what? Go listen to this whole project though, because it's only 30 minutes out of your life and, and trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Hopefully your actual full length album is this good. Lil Skies, Through the Motions, one of the undisputed faces of this SoundCloud rapper generation. I thought his sophomore record Shelby showed a, a lot of maturation over a very short period of time, which is not surprising when you're 19, 20. Like my 20 year old self was pretty different from my 19 year old self, but still, and then, nevertheless, I'm always really happy to see artists grow. Just the, this dude has a better sense of melody, a, a, a better ability to emote, a way better beat selection, which is all showcased on this slightly melancholic cut. I love the beat especially. The beat stays in my head more than his actual lyrics do. Skies is funny because for people who follow this crop of MCs uh, but closely, he's actually considered like one of the more generic voice is not really one of the essential figures, but that's actually why I like him. Because at least to my ears, he's not too left of center or too lyrically vapid or too challenging to the form of traditional hip hop, like a little pump might be. And yeah, I definitely like the, the more introspective material on, on this new record of his, and I, I really hope he continues in this direction. Okay, best song of the quarter by far, it's gotta be Tame Impala's Patience single. Yeah, this, the American Football song, and the Dizzy Wright song would probably be my, my top three, I guess. If this song is any way indicative of Tame Impala's direction on their upcoming record, I'm, I'm so fucking excited. It's actually been my wake up song uh, the past month or so. And despite the, the, the sort of emotionally complex lyrics, I find this song just has this kind of hopeful, invigorating energy to it. And I love hearing it first thing in the morning. And of course, I approve very much so of the flanger usage here. The piano line is amazing and sounds amazing. Just a must listen for everybody. Would love to know what the lyrics are exactly about, but I'm actually enjoying my little personal interpretation of them that applies to my life. So we'll keep it there for now. Thanks, Kevin. Weezer, oh, another shoe in I'm just being honest off the Black Album. This song is as hooky as it is hilarious with Rivers Cuomo finding himself in, in various quagmires due to his honesty, whether it be making the unwise decision to comment on his girl's new haircut or whether it be a situation with a, with a pushy fan's shitty demo. This band has such a knack for simplicity and, and such a knack for humor. I, I feel like that's something that's so lost on so many artists. Like this track is, is a very well-written rock tune, but it's also funny when his girl says, you like sleeping on the couch. And I just love the idea of him walking into the venue, trying to just get his sound check and this fucking awful fan, like just pushing his demo on him. He's like, I gotta listen to this. And but it's, and then he just has a moment of honesty, probably just out of being tired and worn out and sick of being all political with the public and <laughs> just tells him how he really feels. We just music has always been beautifully human. That's why, that's why people connected with them in the 90s and that's why I still connect with them now. And closing things out here is Zakari of Top Dog Entertainment with the ever so smooth and sensual Midas Touch single. The sort of weekend inspired R&B hip hop collision here is quite poignant. Zakari's falsetto has this irresistible charm to it and also pulls off this unique feat in delivery of, of being light and delicate but also implying this certain level of swagger and bravado. And then on the other end of the spectrum, the instrumental of this track 
has kind of this dreamy ambiance to it, but also combines that with a rumbling fucking bass line. So it's a song that appeals for a lot of conflicting reasons, which is something that I always love. And there you have it, back up in that quarterly favorite song segment. <laughs> Let me know again in the comments if you want to see the Q3, Q4 list from last year, because they exist, believe me. Really hope you guys enjoyed this. Do yourself a fucking favor and listen to any of these songs that you might not have heard, which statistically speaking, there are several. Again, Spotify playlist link in the description. And as always, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video and are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here, as well as checking out any of the other content that I publish here on a regular basis. Really appreciate you watching, supporting, engaging. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Ryan Music, Instagram, same handle. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys soon.